Hi, I'm Mike. I'm standing here with Amy Kinney from Second Conf. So, hi, Amy. Can you uh, tell me a little bit about what Second Conf is? It's, it's a conference here in Chicago, but beyond that, I don't know too much. Sure, I'd love to tell you more about it. Um, Second Conf is really a conference about technologists who are passionate about creating interesting and exciting things. So it sort of grew out of the ashes of C4 for people who are familiar with that conference, but it's also a, its own conference in and of itself. This is our third year. Um, we've expanded every year. We've got about 100 attendees. It's a, it's a deliberately mm -hmm. small conference, so you can meet everyone. Um, you can talk to all the presenters. Um, it's just one of those great things where there's a wonderful community of people who love to come to this every year. We have people yep. coming from all over the U.S. as well as internationally. And um, my husband, David Kinney, and I run the conference, and he likes to describe it as the kind of conference that he would like to attend if he was attending a conference. So it's about interesting things, new things happening with technology, whether it be iPhone and iPad apps or things happening with Android or Arduino. I mean, it can kind so of So there's more software-focused... Yes. I mean, you will see code examples up there, mm -hmm. but you're also going to hear about people who are doing really creative things. Um, our first year, Chris Rojas was there, and he showed a video with a, let me get this right, it was a trampoline-controlled flamethrower that utilized Arduino. <laughs> now that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. It was, say. it was. Did he demo it on stage? Did he you did have to not. get a fire code? No, 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 no. <laughs> he just had the video. So, so um, no, 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 no flamethrowers actually at the conference. Our insurance would be very unhappy with us if we tried was to it do that. A white snake, I think it was. That, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> none of that either. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, so so you, you said you've been doing this a couple of years now. How many yes. years? This is our third year. Third year. And yes. so it, looking at running a conference uh, versus like, uh, Attending, what are, what are some of the things you've learned running a conference? What was some? Oh, was there anything that kind of surprised you? Boy, <laughs> there's a lot of things. Um, no matter how much planning you do, things will never quite go the way that you intend for them to go. But that's okay. That's part of the nature of the conference. Um, as much planning as you do, you're still going to end up running around like a chicken with your head cut off because things just get crazy. Mm -hmm. um, the more you do something, the better you get at it. So you learn what things to do in advance, how to set things up. Um, but each year presents new challenges. We're at a new venue this year at Willis Tower. Right. We had been with Tech Nexus before, but we, we outgrew the space, literally. Yeah. And so um, that's exciting to be in, in a, you know, a larger conference space. We could have a few more people without getting too big. Um, let's see, always have backup plans, yeah. backup plans for your backup plans, whether it be speakers where people get sick at the last minute, um, or just making sure that if you run out of bottled water, you know where the nearest yeah. convenience yeah, store stores. is yeah. to grab things. Um, and part of it, one is, is having a great committee of people who work with you. We have a conference committee mm -hmm. who is really dedicated to helping us. and so uh, delegation. We all, yes, working together and making sure that other people are thinking about things that you may forget about. Right. I think that's important. And then to have a great group of attendees and of people who... Um, just love to come to the conference, enjoy the time together. And people come to a conference for a number of different things, to, to see the speakers, obviously, so having high-quality speakers is important. But a lot of it is about enjoying the time with other people, getting to meet new people, learn new things, um, having a great time, enjoying great food. Um, it's one of the things we pride ourselves as having great food, too. So, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's always one of the trickiest things with, with conferences is what what's the food going to be like in you know, hot yes. versus cold? And in fact, that's really important to us. Um, I have special dietary needs myself, and mm -hmm. so one of the things we ask everyone is, what are your special dietary needs? We check in with everyone, make mm -hmm. sure that everyone who comes there knows they will be well-fed, well-taken oh. care of, and their food is going to be um, safe for them as well. Good. So allergies, everything. We have everything from you know allergic to five different things to vegan to gluten-free, dairy-free, and, and everything else. Now, when you said that you intentionally keep the attendance to uh, a certain size, Yes. Has that ever become like a problem over the last couple of years where you, you might say, oh, we've capped it at 100, but we didn't have enough people that actually showed up because there's always a nutrition rate? You know? There always is a nutrition rate. Um, we do have some people who realize last minute they forgot that they bought their tickets, which seems yeah. odd to me. But um, most of the time people can find someone who is willing to buy their ticket. They can transfer mm -hmm. it over. Um, we sold out in less than two hours this year. Oh, wow. And last year it was about six hours. So um, kind of the running joke is that we tend to sell out faster than Dub Dub does. Yes. What is it, what's that in three years you're going to be like, oh, we didn't even launch yet. We're already yeah. set up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We do tell people when we're selling tickets and when we are going to happen. So it's not like it's a surprise secret. You wake up one morning and we're sold out. We don't do that. 
Um, but we haven't had a problem selling out quickly and everybody loves attending our events. So it is always a struggle trying to balance having a small group with making sure that enough people can attend. Um, but so far, you know, most of the people who do want to attend or put themselves on the waiting list because of attrition and everything, people do tend to get in. So if you're still looking for a ticket, put yourself on the waiting list or watch on Twitter because there are always a couple of last minute people who, who are still trying to sell or transfer their tickets. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me and good luck with the conference. Thank you.